Thank you once again. It's good to have you around. In this tutorial, I'll be talking about the vector error correction model and variance decomposition using if you stain. Please, before you watch this video, make sure you have watched the previous one I did on VAR and variance decomposition. So what is VECM? It simply means vector error correction model, which restricts the long-run behavior of the endogenous variables to converge to their co-integrating relationships while allowing for short-run adjustments. It is also known as a restricted VAR, which is designed for use with non-stationary series that are known to be co-integrated. The co-integrating term is simply known as the error correction term, since it is a deviation from the long-run equilibrium corrected gradually through a series of partial short-run adjustments. In a three-variable case, I have specified on the screen how the VECM looks like. We can see here, for the log of YT, here is a difference um, log of the log of YT, here is a difference X variable, and here is a difference Z variable. Coded in red is the error correction term, which signifies the long-run equation. So this is how the vector error correction mechanism is specified. So going to variance decomposition, what does it mean? The variance decomposition is a focus error that gives the percentage of unexpected variation in each variable produced by shocks from other variables. It also indicates the relative impacts that a variable has on another variable. The VD enables assessment of economic significance of this impact as a percentage of the forecast error of a variable, summing it to 1. The VD procedure in the VAR system decomposes the forecast error variance. So these are the different interpretations for the variance decomposition. It is also the component that measures the fraction in the variable explained by innovations. Innovations are simply shocks. Step 1 you are to state your research objective. You need to let the audience know what you are writing about or what you are talking about. In this example, I'll be applying a vector error correction model to investigate the relation between agricultural investments, agricultural value added per worker, and economic growth. And I also want to know if there's going to be any significant impact from the shocks. So this is where the components of the variance decomposition comes in analyzing significant impacts from shocks. So that's a step one. Step two, you are to perform stationarity tests. This is mandatory. All your series must be stationary. Then go ahead to obtain the optimal lags for each of the variables. Perform cointegration test. If there is no cointegration, there's no point you estimating a vector error correction. Simply estimate the VAR model. Or if there is co-integration, estimate the VECM. That's step five. Step six, perform some diagnostics. And the last step will be to perform the variance decomposition. So having highlighted all the simple steps, let's now go to eViews to investigate this relation I've shown on the screen. My research objective has been stated, so I move on to step two. That would be to test for stationarity. In most of my videos, I've shown how you can perform your unit root test. So I'm not going to go into details in this tutorial. I will just take a variable, do that one so that you can see how it's done. Then you can apply it to the rest of your variables. So starting with real GDP, I double click on that view. Unit root test. I'm testing our levels. I'm changing maximum lags of 9 to 2. Using the stress info criterion, I click OK. From the result, real GDP is clearly non-stationary. To make it stationary, I go back to view. Unit true test. Now I click on first difference. Still using maximum lags of two, I click OK. Now at 4.33 in absolute terms, it is now a stationary series. So the same thing I did for government investment in agriculture and AVW. So all three variables are stationary at first difference. Now I move on to step three, which is to determine the optimal lags for these variables. 
again i have so many videos showing you how to perform optimal lags for the variables so in this tutorial i will just perform it on a variable and you can do the same thing for all the variables in your own model so to obtain the optimal lags for real gdp all i need to do is to estimate an unrestricted var and from there determine the lag structure i go to quick I click on estimate var. Make sure the standard var button is indicated. And here I type the variable real GDP. The lag intervals, the way it is, and I click OK. To determine the lag structure for real GDP, I go to view, lag structure, lag left criteria. I modify 3 to 2, and I click OK. As determined by the Schwarz criterion, I'm sticking to one as the optimal lag for real GDP. So doing the same thing for other variables, the GIA lag structure is two, while the AVW lag structure is one. So I have a combination of one and two lags for the variables in this model. So do the same thing for your variables. Step three is done. So I move on to step four, which is to perform the Johansson cointegration. Remember, you perform Johansson only when your variables are stationary. My variables are stationary at first difference. I go ahead to perform the Johansson cointegration test. And to do that, I go to quick. I click on group statistics and I select Johansson cointegration test. Here I list the variables and I click OK. So in this box, I'm going to modify the lag intervals from 1, 1 to 1, 2 going by the outcome of my lag structure test. Every other thing looks okay, then I click okay. Here on the screen is the outcome of the Johansson cointegration test. I have the unrestricted cointegration rank test here, the trace statistics, and I have the eigenvalue statistic. And look at here, you can see that the trace test indicates three cointegrating equations at the 5% level. These are the three hypotheses for the Johansson cointegration test. The none here simply means the null hypothesis is saying there is no cointegrating equation. The second null hypothesis here states that there is at most one cointegrating equation. And the third null hypothesis here states that there is at most two cointegrating equations. And all three null hypotheses have been rejected. So that indicates that there are three cointegrating equations at the 5% level. So once you see an asterisk sign, it indicates rejection of the null hypothesis. So using the Johansson cointegration test, we can confirm that there is cointegration among these variables. Step five will be now to perform the vector error correction model. To do that, we go to quick, click on estimate var, now select the vector error correction button, then list all the variables. Lag interval is good, 1 to 2, I click OK. Here's the results for the VECM. And our main interest is here, where we have the cointegrating equation and we have the coefficient being negative and statistically significant, going by the T statistics of 2.78. And here we have all the respective coefficients for the variables in the model. Step 6, to perform some diagnostics, we click on View. Residual test, I begin with the autocorrelation LM test, click on that. I'm modifying the lags from 3 to 2, I click OK. This is good to see that there is no serial correlation in the model. Next test will be the normality test. Using the Koleski of covariance, I click OK. The screen is a result from normality test. There are three components, each representing a variable. Only the variable has a normally distributed uh, residual. The same thing cannot be said for the other two variables. So this is the outcome for the residual test. Let me perform a heteroscedasticity. And here we can see from the probability value of the joint test, the model is not um, heteroscedastic. So this is also very good. So having done all this, we move on to the final step, which is step seven, to perform the variance decomposition. And to do that, we go to view, variance decomposition, click on that. 
Looking at the variance decomposition box, I'm modifying period 10 to 5. In my own study, a period represents a year. So I just want to forecast five years into the future. I also want my results to be displayed in the table form. Everything looks good, and I click OK. So displayed on the screen is the outcome of the variance decomposition for the three variables. You can see the one here for real GDP, this one for GIA, and this one for AVW. Please stay tuned for my next video where I give you an in-depth uh, interpretation of the VEC results and the variance decomposition results. Thank you for watching. Please don't go away. I'll be right back with the interpretation of the VEC and the variance decomposition results.